Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I wanna be going over the layers of the heart. So let's get started. Surrounding your heart is a sac called the pericardium, and it acts as a protective and supportive covering that does a few things. It will help prevent overstretching of your heart. It helps keep out invaders that could cause infection, and it keeps your heart in place so it isn't flopping all over your chest, especially during activities. Now the pericardium is made up of two layers. The first layer, which is our outer layer, is known as the fibrous pericardium. And this layer is made up of a tough connective tissue, hence its name fibrous, which means very strong. Now because of its composition of this tough fibrous material, it's great at providing anchorage to nearby structures like the great vessels and the diaphragm, so it keeps it in place in the mediastinum. In addition, this fibrous pericardium is going to play a huge role in preventing our heart from overstretching when we have an increase in blood volume. The second layer of the pericardium is known as the serous pericardium, and this layer produces serous fluid, which plays a role with helping lubricate our heart so whenever it beats, those layers don't rub up against each other and cause friction. Now, this layer is also made up of two layers that are continuous with each other, and because they're continuous with each other, they help form the pericardial space, which helps store the serous fluid. So let's take a closer look at these two layers of the serous pericardium. The first layer is called the parietal layer of the serous pericardium, and it comes into contact with the fibrous pericardium itself. Then you will see the pericardial space, and then right next to that in yellow, you will see the next, the second layer of the serous pericardium, which is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. This is also called the epicardium, which is actually one of the three layers of the heart wall. It's the outermost layer. So when I refer to epicardium, I'm also talking about this visceral layer of the serous pericardium. And this layer adheres and lines the actual heart itself. So to help you remember visceral layers versus parietal layers and what structures they adhere to, whether we're talking about the heart or any other areas in anatomy, remember that visceral layers are always going to surround the vital organ itself. Visceral has VI, vital has VI. So these connected layers, the parietal and the visceral, are going to connect and fold in a way that creates a special space called the pericardial cavity or space. And this area contains serous fluid that helps your heart beat without friction or resistance. It acts as a protective barrier to the deepest parts of your heart to protect it from infection or trauma. Now from a nursing standpoint, you wanna be familiar with the pericardium because there's a lot of diseases that affect these layers and its space. For instance, like a pericardial effusion, this is where we have way too much fluid in this pericardial space. Or if we get inflammation of these layers, it can lead to pericarditis. And with pericarditis, what you wanna remember are the things that you're gonna find in a patient who has this. For instance, you're going to hear a pericardial friction rub. And this is where these layers are rubbing up against each other. They're not really lubricated anymore. So whenever this happens, you're gonna hear a specific sound. It's gonna sound like a grating, scratching sound because those layers are just literally rubbing on each other. And it's going to be heard at the left of the sternal border. You're gonna hear it best whenever the patient sets up and leans forward and more towards the end of expiration. Now circling back to the layers of the heart, we just got done talking about the visceral layer of the serous pericardium, which again is known as the epicardium, which is one of the three layers of our heart wall. It's the outermost layer. Now under the epicardium is the myocardium, which is the second layer of that heart wall. And it is our middle layer. So remember, myocardium starts with M and middle starts with M. So we know that this is our middle layer of those three layers. And notice that this layer is the thickest of all the layers and it's the most unique of all the layers of the heart wall because it's made of myocytes which are a special network of bundles of cardiac muscles that cause involuntary rhythmic continuous heart contractions under the direction of our heart's electrical conduction system. In addition, the myocardium contains and supports our electrical structures of the heart. And this layer is supplied by our coronary arteries. 
Now from a nursing standpoint, you wanna be familiar with this myocardium because it's like the most essential part for giving your heart its pumping function. But unfortunately, this layer can be affected by disease processes. A big disease process that you're gonna encounter as a nurse is a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. This is where there's been decreased blood flow through those coronary arteries where they've been limited in their ability to deliver fresh oxygenated blood to the myocardium, specifically those myocytes. And those myocytes die and parts of this heart die and it limits its ability to function and pump, which can lead to heart failure. In addition, this layer can be affected through toxins in the heart or infection leading to myocarditis. So whenever you have a patient who has a myocardial infarction or myocarditis, this is the part of the heart that is being affected. Now, the next layer, which is our third layer, and our innermost layer is called the endocardium. And the word endo means inner. So we're talking about the layer that is inside of our heart. And this layer consists of an endothelium and covers the inside of our heart, such as our chambers, like our atria and ventricles and valves. This layer is very smooth, which allows blood to easily flow throughout the heart without problems. So we don't get the formation of clots. Because remember, if blood is impeded where it's going to stay still too long, it will start to form clots. But this layer is designed in a way that's going to prevent that. Now, unfortunately, problems can also arise with this layer as well, especially with a condition known as endocarditis. So whenever you hear that term, we have inflammation of the endocardium. And what happens is that invaders get into this layer. But how do they do that? Typically how they do that is because something has entered our bloodstream. It could be through an infection or IV drug use. But whatever the cause is, it gets inside the blood. We know the blood flows through the heart. And as that blood that's tainted with those invaders flows through a heart, those invaders start to stick inside that endocardium, which leads to infection. Now this typically affects the valves of the heart, like your tricuspid, or your aortic and so forth. Okay, so that wraps up this review on the layers of the heart. And don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this material we just covered.